With 520 miles of shoreline, the waterways that surround the five boroughs of New York City are among the city's greatest and most valuable assets. Each year, millions of people enjoy the city's waterfront and waterways, thanks in part to the work of the New York City Department of Environmental Protection, or DEP. Over the past decade, DEP has invested more than $10 billion in sewer and wastewater treatment plant upgrades to improve water quality in New York's waterways. As a result, the New York City Harbor is cleaner than it has been in more than a century of testing, even as the city's population continues to grow. Over 90% of the harbor currently meets federal water quality standards, but for those waterways that do not yet meet the standards for pathogens, the biggest remaining challenge is to further reduce combined sewer overflows, or CSOs, that discharge a mixture of untreated sewage and stormwater runoff when it rains. On a sunny day, the city's 14 wastewater treatment plants treat 100% of the sanitary waste that is generated by homes and buildings whenever a toilet is flushed or water goes down the kitchen drain. When it rains, the water that hits rooftops, streets, and sidewalks is called stormwater runoff and enters the sewer system through catch basins, drains, or gutters. New York, like many other older cities, has a combined sewer system. This means that stormwater runoff combines with the sanitary waste inside of the pipes. The city's wastewater treatment plants are designed to treat two times the normal sanitary flow but during some rain events, the wastewater treatment plant cannot handle this additional combined flow. In order to prevent street flooding, sewer backups, and serious damage to the wastewater treatment plants, the system may discharge this untreated mix of stormwater runoff and sanitary flow out of the outfalls along the waterfront. This is called a combined sewer overflow, or CSO. CSOs pose a serious challenge to New York City's waterways because of our ultra-urban environment. Over 72% of the city is impervious, meaning that a tremendous amount of stormwater runoff can be generated from our streets, sidewalks, parking lots, and rooftops during wet weather events. In September 2010, Mayor Michael Bloomberg released the NYC Green Infrastructure Plan, an adaptive management approach to reducing CSOs. The plan laid a framework for $2.9 billion in cost-effective gray infrastructure investments and an estimated $1.5 billion in public green infrastructure investments by 2030. In January 2011, DEP created the Office of Green Infrastructure, whose primary objective is to implement the city's green infrastructure program, which will improve water quality, beautify the cityscape, and save New Yorkers billions of dollars over the next 20 years. Green infrastructure promotes the natural movement of water, and so instead of the water going into the sewer system, it's directed into specifically designed and engineered systems that feature layers like soil, broken stone, vegetation, and water is directed there so that it absorbs into the ground or infiltrates into the underlying soils and pre prevents it from going into the sewer system entirely. Right now, we're in the process of siting bioswales across um, the Brooklyn, um, Queens, and the Bronx. Right-of-way bioswales are built um, in the sidewalk. Um, they capture runoff from the street, road water runoff, um, and they capture that runoff and then it infiltrates into the soil. Right-of-way bioswales are five feet deep. Um, they have a stone layer and a soil layer that um, is engineered to manage and hold as much water as they can. Each bioswale can hold on average around 2,000 gallons of water. Right now we have 130 bioswales built around the city um, and by the end of 2015 there will be thousands of them in Brooklyn, Queens and the Bronx. The DEP is coordinating and leading the effort for um, constructing the bioswales uh, with our partners at the Department of Parks and Recreation and the Department of Transportation. Uh, all three agencies work very closely together um, in locating the, where we can best place the bioswales and also um, in the long-term maintenance of the program. The bulk of our program is building green infrastructure technologies like right-of-way bioswales, stormwater green streets, rain gardens and green roofs on publicly owned property. So we have many partnerships with city agencies through a green infrastructure task force and we work with those agencies to identify properties within our priority areas that might be a good fit for green infrastructure retrofits.
For private property owners in combined sewer areas, DEP offers a green infrastructure grant program. To date, DEP has committed over $11 million in the design and construction costs for green infrastructure to be installed on universities, nonprofits, businesses, and affordable housing complexes. Here in New York City, we face a lot of unique challenges. Over 8.5 million people, tremendous amount of impervious area because of our city streets, our sidewalks, our buildings. What we're known for as New Yorkers is really our city streetscape and our massive buildings. But in terms of the environment and creating a sustainable environment, the issue of managing stormwater presents a lot of challenges for the work that we do at the Department of Environmental Protection. One of the interesting things that we've done in DEP's program was having neighborhood demonstration areas, as we call it. So this was part of an overall adaptive management approach. We tried to structurally build in what we think is our best practice, which is learning by doing and constant uh, evolution and, and constant improvement. We have areas that are roughly 20 acres or so. They all drain to a single pipe. We monitor that pipe so that we get a, a baseline of the um, sewer flows during pre-construction periods. Then we build a number of green infrastructure installations. We have maybe 20 or 30 uh, in each area. Uh, and then we monitor it afterwards. And that will continue for a few years, but we'll get a very good sense of our pre-construction, post-construction uh, stormwater profile and what, how much of a difference we make. We know these green infrastructure will work. The question is how much they work, for what kind of storm, during what kind of season. Uh, a lot of that will go into our water quality planning. The green infrastructure plan gives us an opportunity to use water as a resource rather than a waste. So we build projects that capture the rainwater as soon as it hits the impervious area. The way that we're building these through a targeted area-wide approach. And that's one of the things that's really set the city apart in terms of how we're prioritizing our green infrastructure investments. We've identified specific CSO outfalls, sort of the worst offenders that have really high volume of combined sewer overflow coming out of them or a lot of CSO events happening and we're targeting our right-of-way bioswale and stormwater green street construction in the areas that drain to those specific CSO outfalls. Ultimately, we want to see a reduction in CSO events at that specific outfall. This area-wide strategy allows DEP to maintain the flexibility to prioritize investments in the areas of the city and the specific waterways that will benefit the most from the resulting reductions in combined sewer overflows. By installing these cutting-edge green infrastructure technologies, DEP is not only working to absorb the water where it lands, but to enhance the local quality of life by providing shade, beautifying the city, improving our waterways, and building a greener, greater New York.